This is HRTV Rewind, taking a look back at the racing week. Opening night at Churchill Downs, they're going to run under the lights for the first race car to the meet. Talk a little bit about what you expect for the atmosphere, Katie. Well, one thing about it, Aaron, we're glad that we're running at all under a clear sky because it's been nothing but rain here, as you well know. But it is the best, the best day weather-wise and the best night weather-wise we've had in weeks and weeks here in Louisville. So uh, people are getting pumped up for opening night, not just because it's the Derby trial, but also because it's going to be such a beautiful night weather-wise. And you have an 11 race program. Uh, of course, uh, people looking to the Derby trial to possibly even get a line on a horse that will pop up in the Preakness later on is a very good race in its own right but as far as the crowd that's expected here they're talking about numbers like 50,000 people um, six o'clock post time kicks it all off and they've already started decking out the paddock here with the things you don't see every day so uh, this night is going to truly be special regardless of the outcome history will be made for the first time in 87 years the derby trial will be run under the lights this grade three field has no Kentucky Derby designs, but a great run could lead to a berth in the Preakness. Visions of Roses were once part of the plan for Machen, but his team changed course and decided that wasn't the way to go. Machen runs out impressively. Traveling Man is on the stretch out. After an emphatic victory in the swale, this trippy colt has an additional furlong to navigate. Traveling Man in the swale. Then there's JJ's lucky train. Nearly unstoppable, winning five of eight starts for Connections, who made a savvy claim when they plucked this colt out of his debut. JJ's lucky train surges to win in the final stride of the Bayshore. Or maybe someone else will shine on this historic evening card. Find out next on HRTV. I'm going to go back with a horse that you might recall a while ago was considered a derby possibility, a horse by the name of Machen. You're saying to yourself, the last two races, nothing to write home about. I agree. The reason why I think today is the day, or at least tonight will be the night, is the fact that they're cutting back. They're cutting back to a one-turn mile, and I've always thought Machen was the type of horse that would benefit from that kind. This three-year-old son of distorted humor, I think, is going to come back. It's a rally time. Is it derby for this one? I don't believe so. In fact, I would be shocked, even if they win, if they decided to come back a week later. But I do think, again, one-turn mile type is exactly what Machen wants to do, and that's why I think Machen is going to win the trial. Traveling Man is back to second. Indiano, Indian Winter, JJ's Lucky Train, and then Machen inside the final furlong now. It is Dominus who is out in front by over two lengths. Here on the outside comes Machen. Machen is laying down one last late lunge on the outside. Machin and Dominus tight, Machin near side, Dominus the far side, back in third, JJ's lucky train. thought maybe the first quarter they weren't going quite as fast as they needed to, but then they picked it up, I think, to 46 and change, which I thought helped. But then going into the turn, he looked smooth, he looked like he was picking his, up his horses. And, uh, you know, again, here, you know, with the long stretch, you got a chance. Speaking of uh, middle distances and, and having a chance, uh, what's the chance that we would see this horse in maybe one of these big three-year-old races coming up? Yeah, well, I, I mean, I think that like a long-term goal would be like a, a race like the King's Bishop, right? races like that. But keeping him where he's comfortable, where he can put his, be his best foot forward, coming from off the pace, but, but one turn. really have to think more about turf racing because in general our tracks our dirt tracks are very fair in new york and belmont park is just a very fair course so the biggest change is the the turf sprints you get so many turf sprints we run and they're a much different animal than route races on the turf and i think one of the, the keys to success um in turf races or i should say keys to not just completely failing all the time which is what i used to do in them is you have to be <laughs> attuned to horses that want to sprint on the turf it's they're very different whereas in the dirt one of my favorite angles for playing are turnbacks, horses going from routes to sprints. It's counterintuitive. You would think it would be something that would be more effective in turf racing where closers do well, but it is not the case. Turnbacks in turf sprints virtually never win, and vice versa. Turf sprinters stretching out don't have much success. So I think you really have to try to get a handle on these turf sprints because they're so much a part of our races here and into our pick fours that you really 
want to have some kind of idea what to do with them, and you have to find who you think the best sprinters are in those races. Convocation moves to join the leaders on the far outside. One furlong to go. Kaisha Electronica has a three-length lead. Convocation Hainesfield, not today. Christmas for Liam, too fast, too soon. Schoolyard Dreams comes up on the outside as Kaisha Electronica wins the Westchester by two and three-quarter lengths over Convocation. Into the final furlong and chorus music just blows on by. Exclusive scheme. Akalina up to third, Paraiba fourth, and Freedom Rings fifth. No doubt about the winner. Chorus music shot away from them in the final two furlongs. The win by almost six lengths. He's 6 or 7, lands clear to Jubalbi Gold is coming to second. Native Khan in third position, inside the last furlong. A horse who is pure class, Frankel, has destroyed them from halfway. An amazing performance as Frankel heads towards the line to make every single yard in the Guinness and win it well. Jubalbi Gold is... Frankel is an amazing colt, a three-year-old son of Galileo, obviously named after the late Bobby Frankel, who trained so many top racehorses for Khalid Abdullah. And Frankel now has won six in a row yeah. and after a maiden win of only a half a length he has absolutely pulverized his opposition winning by 13 10 two and a half four this margin of victory six lengths it was never close he actually had a pacemaker in the race the pacemaker couldn't keep up nobody could as frankel demolishes his field now aaron the question is what is what happens here uh he obviously would be ticketed for the epsom derby but the way he runs he's so brilliant he's so fast it's uncontrollable speed to a point I'm just not sure whether that kind of uh, ability translates itself well uh, to Epsom. Heading up towards the line, Dan Dino all the time. Tackled by Native Ruler on the far side. It's very tight between them. Native Ruler in a brilliant training performance has just maybe got up to Dan Dino. Side group therapy making good progress. Prohibit and Bordeler Scott towards the near side. Could be a bunch finish in front is Tangerine Trees as they race towards the line. Rain delayed flying. Tangerine Trees has held on. Soul power and rain delayed. Furlong of the Grey Goose Bewitch Stakes and it's Kirtana opening up by three. On a mere second, my baby baby, a late charge to third toward the inside. Kirtana, Jose Lescano will take the feature. Seven lengths off the lead, and Rahi's attorney comes to the eighth pole, chased by Windward Islands, then Musketeer on the outside. Pool play running late, grandstand side. Final furlong of the Elkhorn. Musketeer hits another gear coming after Rahi's attorney, and Musketeer just brilliant chased home by Pool play. But Musketeer and John Velasquez to take the Elkhorn. You run two in this afternoon's Grade 3 Wilshire in Dubari Heights and Smart Striking. Dubari Heights just a half length short of a three race winning streak. How's she doing coming in? Yeah, no, she's training great. We've been very happy with her. Um, obviously, she had good form in Europe and, you know, she's since coming here, she's won a maiden and her allowance. And, you know, I think she's a progressive filly. Did she surprise you how well she's adapted to U.S. racing? Not particularly. She's, we always thought she had the right attributes for here. You know, she's very tough, um, straightforward filly to train, who's shown good form on firm turf in England. So, no, we thought she was the right type of filly for here. Victorious on the turf course at Hollywood Park. She does return there today. Where would you expect to see her placed? I think there appears to be a lot of speed in the race today. So, you know, I'll leave it to Joel. He knows her well. But I'd imagine we'll be just in behind the speed, maybe somewhere in third or fourth. Miss Pleasant has taken over the lead. Berg Berg is back in second. Du Bowie Heights. Well, money draws within two of the lead. She's got a chance. Du Bowie Heights strikes the front. Miss Pleasant. Berg Berg. Well, money to the outside. Talk too much. Du Bowie Heights wins. Up next on Rewind. Pursuit of the Crown has landed beneath the Twin Spires here at Churchill Downs as we are just seven days away from one of the most legendary events in all of sports, that being the run for the Rose. You're watching HRTV Rewind. 
was a busy couple of days. Todd Pletcher had his big colt out this morning. Uncle Mo looking fantastic yet again earlier this morning amongst many of the workouts that we will be showing you in the next week here on Pursuit of the Crown. Well, since affirmed last one at Triple Crown and Thoroughbred Horse Racing, there have been over 1.2 million foals. Just to give you an example of how tough this challenge is, and we're going to have 20 horses to talk about as we move towards the first leg of the Triple Crown. I welcome in my co-host Richard Migliori and key workouts now being put in for this uh, the biggest race of these horses' careers. What are you looking for in the next seven days from these colts? I'm looking for a horse that's fit but still holding his flesh. I'm looking for a horse that gets over the ground really well. And I'm not a guy who puts a lot of importance on time. I like to see how a horse does things more importantly. Graded stakes earnings, the top 10. There has been no change, no shakeup. And as we move to the bottom half of this page, Richie, it, it kind of feels like we're going to hopefully stay with this 20, unlike years past where we've seen a lot of shakeup at the bottom. Well, hopefully nothing happens to anybody, not between now and the Derby. That, that would be a heartbreaking event for their connections. But you do have some horses waiting in the wings. And I'm, I'm sure everybody wants to know what their preparation has to be and be in the race that day. Well, let's get down to the workouts that have been occurring here at Churchill Downs. We're going to go back to yesterday. Arch, 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 your Arkansas Derby winner, John Court aboard for Jinx Fires. And this horse's workout changing a lot of people's opinions uh, after this move yesterday. You know, I thought the work was terrific. I thought the way he appeared this morning, coming out to go school at the gate, John Court aboard and some light exercise, really made me like him even more. I thought he came out of the work as though the work did exactly what it was designed to do, propel him forward towards the Derby. Well, Shackelford got in this week with some defections. He was the horse that gave dialed in everything he wanted in the Florida Derby and really came into a lot of people's radars. He worked this morning 58 and 4 fifth seconds for 5-8. Uh, I mean, he's looked sharp here all week. And, um, you know, he just came away from the poll. He went 11 and 2, 22 and 4, 34 and 1. Now, don't forget, he's got Tammy Fox aboard, and, and she weighs about 85 pounds. So, you know, that could make a difference when a horse is working and they don't feel that kind of weight on their back. Mucho Macho Man, uh, he went and took, again, went ahead, the connections did, and took the weather uh, out of the equation. They were supposed to work tomorrow. Kathy Ritvo opting to work today just so he gets an opportunity to work over this track, over a fast main track. Yeah, and, and he made a good appearance on the track. And when he was going to break off, I was standing right at the 5 8 pole, and they were finishing a marathon. So there were a lot of people running in the infield. And Rajiv Maraj had a hard time getting his attention, getting him down to the rail. He was kind of gawking in the infield, looking at all the people. And he even, didn't even corner that well coming off the turn. Rajiv had to correct him a few times. And then you'll see, he really shakes him up to get his attention in the last furlong. Well, you can never discount Calvin Burrell at Churchill Downs. and. Uh, that being said, I wasn't crazy about this workout. I thought the horse looked heavy the way he hits the ground. I didn't think he looked as comfortable as you'd like to see a horse, kind of pinning his ears pretty hard coming to the wire. And it wasn't as though Calvin wasn't letting him really run the last part. Um, wasn't didn't give me the most favorable impression, I should say. Winning the Sunland Derby, it was a distance of a mile and an eighth. How confident do you feel that he will be able to handle the extra bit of distance going into the Kentucky Derby, having seen the way he finished up in the Sunland Derby? The horse uh, has really matured in his last few races, and uh, he has shown a uh, good finish in all of his uh, Last few races, he's out of a uh, cormorant mare, which gives him a good chance to be a stayer. Animal Kingdom, he goes in company. This is a colt whose workouts workout last time really didn't go as planned, so they need a little bit more as he steps forward towards the Kentucky Derby. Now, this colt was impressive because what he did, he did so easily. I was standing back again by the 5 eights, but when he went by me, it looked like they were crawling and he actually went off in 12 and 2, and it looked more like 14. Graham was just looking for him to get over the ground well and handle the track okay and, and probably finish up, and he did, he did all those things. You know, he had Robbie Alvarado aboard. He had a work made in front of him as a target. Um, and, and, you know, to me, I just thought he did everything that he needed to do. Twin Spired, he's the last one in right now, number 20 on the graded stakes earnings list. Now, this came over uh, at trackside over at the uh, Churchill Downs Training Center, just about 10 minutes down the road is Mike Maker. This is where he likes to prepare his horses, second in the bluegrass as he moves forward this morning for Mike Maker. 
We pick it up with his half-mile workout going 47 and four-fifths with Rosie Napravnik aboard. I thought he got over the ground really well. Just kind of ran over the top of the ground and skipped along and, and looked really, really good doing it. He seemed to handle it fine. This looked like a very easy maintenance work for this horse. He had a very fast work, two works back in Florida. He came back last week. I was a little disappointed in his, in his work last week. I know the work before, the week before was fast. But I, I, I thought he should have done a little better, galloped out a little stronger in what was his last real serious work a week ago at Palmetto's. Uncle Mo and Stay Thirsty just uh, after 8.30 a.m. Eastern, and that's Uncle Mo on the outside. He gets the 5.8s and 101 and 3. Stay Thirsty on the inside, 101 and 4, as we uh, take a look at this uh, workout for Pletcher, Gary. Yeah, and uh, Johnny V broke off about a length and a half behind Stay Thirsty. Stay Thirsty, much more aggressive early on. You can see the rider really restraining him right now. Johnny V just letting Uncle Mo get into stride as they enter the stretch, Richie. Yeah, it, it appeared to me that he, Johnny Velasquez had to keep getting Uncle Mo's attention. Like, come on, buddy, let's stay with it. Let's stay with it. Where the other horse, Stay Thirsty, was much more aggressive, like Gary said. The interesting thing is, is when they've worked together in the past before, Johnny's usually the one throttling, and the rider on Stay Thirsty is the one asking a little bit. Today it was flip-flop. You know, it's kind of a textbook kind of work for what we generally try to structure, which 101-type work. Generally, you know, the kind of fractions that we ideally want to set out are 13, 25 and change, 37 and change with a good finish and uh, a good gallop out. And I mean, to, to me, it was, uh, you know, textbook 101 type work. He's very, very well bred. He's obviously from the first crop of Bernardini, who was a champion three-year-old in a Preakness winner by AP Indy. And Bernardini's off to a very, very good start to his stud career. He's already had five graded winners, um, including in the U.S. Uh, AZ Warrior, who was a grade one winner, and Honor and Serve. And, of course, he had Arthur's tail, who was only just beaten in the wood, too. There are some up-and-coming horses like Arch, 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 Toby's Corner. These are a couple of horses I like, and I know you do as well. Yeah, I do, Jeff. I, I just thought, in watching the Arkansas Derby, the thing that most impressed me about it was I think that race will look a lot like the Kentucky Derby running, and that the pace should be similar, horses making different moves in a race, and, and who, who was most impressive. And, I really like the way Arch, Arch, Arch ran. Obviously, a lot of people are on the horse that ran second. They were, uh, I, I don't have a problem with that either. But, yeah, and the fact that Richie Migliori and Mike Welsh both like the workout, that helps me a lot because I respect their opinions. About it. Well, you got to think Arch, Arch, Arch is one of those horses, Dick, that may get first run on those deep closers the first Saturday in May. That's got to be a positive sign for a horse who's going to be 15-1 to 1 on the tote board. Yeah, no question, and, and I think that's the number on the odds board is going to be huge because I think Nero is a horse who's going to get bet much more than Arch, Arch, Arch because of the perception, and, and the reality was that he was rolling at the finish, but the Derby is often won by the first horse to the eighth pole, and I think that might be Arch, Arch, Arch. When HRTV Rewind returns. She looks just as good here as she did there. I mean, I thought her pre uh, Gulfstream Park Oaks works was sensational, and today was just kind of a maintenance work. Uh, as you look at uh, the top fillies right now in terms of graded stakes earnings, our Heat Lightning actually breezed this morning along with Catman Blue uh, with $328,000. She secured a spot in there. We'll take a look at her work. A uh, couple of defections over the last couple of days. Uh, this is the, the field as it looks right now. Her smile, kind of one of the latest to join the mix. Fletcher's big filly, no question about it. Our heat lightning out a little later in the morning for this workout at half a mile. She can tend to be a little aggressive in the morning. Very headstrong, yes. And, you know, this kind of workout for her, I've been watching her gallop every morning, as you have, and she's very difficult to ride in the morning, extremely tough to gallop. She wants to carry her head off to the side, very headstrong. So he's dropped her head here and just letting her kind of get into a stride and run along. And look, she's got some horses in front of her here, so she's got a target to run. She's extremely wide, but look how she takes off they're pulling him again. She's just an awkward looking filly to watch, but it doesn't seem to affect the way she runs. She worked uh, very well, I thought. Typical of her, you know, pretty headstrong and uh, hard held throughout, but it was, uh, I thought, a good good workout. She's uh, she's tough, you know. She's, uh, she's very enthusiastic about her job every day. I wish uh, at times that she would uh, chill out a little bit, but if she did chill out, I'd probably worry even more. Uh, they, they actually 
dropped her away from the pony at the five eighths pole. I thought she was going to work five eighths, but the intent was clearly to go a half, and the rider really had to, you know, take a hold of her to keep her from running off from the five eighths pole at a half mile. Catman Blue, perhaps uh, one of the main rivals in the Kentucky Oaks, was out this morning for a five for a long work. This is Julian Laparu, her regular rider on board. A lot of jockeys actually uh, doing the work themselves this morning, and uh, kind of a workmanlike effort for her in 101 and four. You know, this is her favorite track. Uh, she won what to me was her best performance here in the Golden Rod. Very impressively. I like the fact she's got her ears up here. Maybe happy to have Julian back aboard her and, and to be back here at Churchill Downs. Being lilacs and lace for John Terranova. Really a surprise winner in that spot. And Richie, this morning she goes uh, 5 eighths in 102 and 3 fifth seconds. Not the fastest of times. Not the fastest. And she was asked for her best through the lane. Um, you know, the rider stayed fairly still with his body, but he, he smacked her on the shoulder a couple times trying to make her pick it up. And uh, I'm just not sure that that form from the synthetic is going to translate over to the dirt. Bouquet Booth, she was also last seen in the grade one Ashland. She was fourth that afternoon. Her best effort came in the Delta Princess as well as winning the Silver Bullet Day at Fairgrounds. A similar timed workout, 102 and 2 fifth seconds. And Summer Soiree also out this morning for her new connections, Grand Motion and Team Valor. She was the winner of the Bourbonette at Turfway Park, but she does have dirt form. A, a nice, easy 48 and 4 fifth seconds for this filly. I actually like this work best of all the Phillies working for the Oaks this morning. As impressive as our heat lightning was, as aggressive as she was, I thought this Philly did it so smoothly and so sweetly, and obviously there was so much more in the tank. I really thought this Philly got over the surface very well. Joyful victory. She's a lot of people's number one, and uh, Richie, after this workout, she might have uh, knocked some people or changed some people's opinions who liked other Phillies based on the 59 and one move we saw this morning. Well, this this was a very impressive move visually. They went very fast early. She didn't finish as fast as she started out, but she was always doing it well. And, you know, she gallops around with Larry Jones every day, gets around there. And I was thinking a lot about this today. It seems like horses that thrive on a lot of work and can really stand up to it thrive with Larry Jones and, and he can stress one but the ones that can take it are good horses. She really did well and uh, you know we, we put the other horse out there to kind of make sure she knew someone was around because she'll get to loafing coming down the lane a little bit but uh, she just kind of got away from the other horse and the other horse is a nice horse. She won the Black Eyed Susan two years ago. I mean the other horse can run and uh, she uh, she made it look uh, like she's about ready. Yeah. Uh, she seems to like this type of weather as well. Well, she's done very well on this. And, you know, you, you've been around this game as long as I have. You know, everybody knows the saying, you can't bet against a gray on the mud. And uh, so if it was to rain Friday, we're not, we're not going out and, and praying for rain. But if it rains, we're not going to be afraid to go out there. And her smile. This is a Pletcher filly for the Kentucky Oaks. She was recently acquired by Bobby Flay. She was second in the Comely, an easy 50 and two-fifths workout going a half mile this morning, Gary. It looks like it was by design. Basically, there's just an open gallop. She's getting over the ground very easy right now. Ears are pricked up, telling me that she's enjoying herself very happy. That's all for Rewind this week. Here's a look at what's coming up next week on HRTV. He mm -hmm. said, by God, he showed them. And you know what <laughs> I heard up there? Eh, just let me run. Come on. You know, I don't want to never let Bobby. anybody be on a parallel with me. I'm just going <laughs> to run away from a mom. You know? yeah, come on. Come on. <laughs> Aptly named, isn't this? Absolutely. Well done.